Welcome to El Medina Tul Munawara, the place where faith has gathered and adhered. Medina, the sanctuary in which lies the second of the two holy mosques, and the place which became the abode of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. A most gracious welcome, gleaming with the gift of culture. A recitation of a journey from the unknown that carries us into the light that illuminates the universe. In times remote, that of the fourth generation of grandsons of the Messenger Noah, on him be peace, a communal group left Babel in search of a new land. They found an oasis sheltered by mountains and surrounded by fields of volcanic rock. It was in it that they settled and established a small village which flourished, naming it after their leader, Yathrib. Some narration mentions that the people called al Amalik lived in it 23 centuries before the emigration of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. They also relate that it was associated with the kingdom of al Muania in the 12th century before the emigration of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Engraved symbols have been discovered as well, which date back to the ruler, al Babali Nabunid. His kingdom in Tema flourished for a period of 10 years during the 11th century before that now famous journey. In the 5th century before the Hijra, some Jewish tribes came to the area as well as Roman legions. The 3rd century before the Hijra, the emigration of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, from Mecca to Medina, witnessed the migration of the al Aus and al Khazraj tribes from Yemen. The span of past centuries saw Arab tribes, both singly and in groups, arriving from neighboring lands. All of these diverse peoples together formed an agrarian society. All directions of Yathrib were scattered with green, their farms yielding vegetables and their groves of palms, dates. Commercial caravans traversing the deserts between Yemen and Asham stopped at the fertile oasis that was Yathrib. They bartered with the inhabitants for the production of their toil, their handmade wares, and the commodities that their land produced. They supplied themselves with water and dates for the onward journey. About 120 years before the emigration of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, discord flared between El Aus and El Khazraj. The intrigue of the Jews had found a perfect home in between the two tribes. The battles continued, as well as the ensuing retaliation kindled by the conspirators. A state of agitation existed that confined life. Some of those impatient with the state of affairs sought to alter their existence and disentangle themselves from the turmoil. A period of change began to dispel things in the three years prior to the emigration with the chance meeting that occurred between one of al-Khazraj and the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, during the Hajj season. He invited him to Islam and recited something of the Quran. He said to the others, O people, learn, by God, indeed it is not the Prophet that threatens you, it is the Jews. There has been nothing like him before. They said to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, Indeed, when we left our people, there was enmity between them. We hope that Allah will join them through you. And they returned to Yathrib as believers. The next year, ten of El Khazraj and two of El Aus met the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and became Muslims. They pledged fealty to him, which became the first pledge of El Aqaba. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, dispatched Musab bin Omer to Yathrib with them to propagate and teach Islam to the others. A number of them, including some of the leaders of al Aus and al Khazraj, accepted the message and were guided to the right path. In the next year, 70 of them left in the season of the Hajj and pledged allegiance to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, at the second pledge of al Aqaba. It was at that time that they invited him and the Muslims of Mecca, to emigrate to them in Yathrib and establish a new community. They made the hijra to Yathrib soon to be followed by the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and his companion, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, Allah be pleased with him. And it was there that the first society in Islam was established. What emerged was a complete transformation, the historic metamorphosis that changed everything.
The name Yathrib was changed to Medina, with many other familiar names ascribed it, as befits its noble stature and enumerates upon its dignity. Amongst them, Playba, Baba, and Darli men. The faith of the inhabitants changed from the idolatry of paganism to Islam, submission to the will of God, the Almighty. The Prophet's mosque became a center of guidance, education, and leadership. Delegations were sent on expeditions to confront the disbelief of paganism and to raise the words of the oneness of Allah. The second year after the immigration was witness to the historic Battle of Badr, 160 kilometers from Medina, in which the Muslims routed the polytheists and killed the power of arrogance. After their defeat, they were, however, intent on retaliation and revenge. They waited until the next year, the third year after the Hijra, in the month of Shawal, when they encountered the Muslims at the Battle of Uhud. The Muslims fought dauntlessly, however, 70 of their number were martyred, amongst them Hamza, the uncle of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. The polytheists retreated to Mecca, but the raids and battles continued to torment them. The Quraysh allied themselves with other polytheist tribes and advanced on Medina in the fifth year after the Hijra, anticipating their completely annihilating the Muslim community. The Muslims excavated a trench to fortify Medina. The polytheist confederation laid siege to them, attempting unsuccessfully many times to breach the gap, only to find themselves repulsed by the barrier. Allah sent fierce winds down upon his enemy, which forced them to unsuccessfully unsuc withdraw. In the time of the Prophet and that of the rightly guided caliphs, Medina was the capital of the new, growing Islamic state. People came from all over to greet the Prophet and after, the rightly guided caliphs, then to pray in the Prophet's mosque and make their salutations upon the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. As the Muslim community in Medina grew and Islamic society developed, the need arose to expand the Prophet's mosque. The first expansion was carried out by the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, himself, in the seventh year after the Hijra. The second time that it was expanded, in answer to the needs of the growing numbers of Muslims, was during the rule of the Caliph, Omar bin al-Khattab, in the year 17 after the emigration. At that time, the existing structure was also restored to its original condition. The Caliph, Uthman bin Affan, renovated the structure, rebuilding it of chiseled stone, and expanding it at the same time in the 30th year after the emigration. The Prophet's Mosque was the central focus of society. It was the point from which the religion spread throughout the Arabian Peninsula, the Levant, Iraq, Egypt, and North Africa, and from which Islamic propagation and the opening of new lands to Islam embarked. In the time of the Umayyads, the seat of the Caliph removed to Damascus. With it went the pulse of political life and the accompanying restiveness. Medina thus became a placid province. Farms and groves of fruit trees flourished and eventually there was not a lot remaining on the banks of Wadi al-Aqiq on which to build. Conditions remained as such throughout the Abbasid period. Many followed the lessons of Imam Malik bin Anas, among them Imam al-Shafi'i. Allah have mercy on them both. During the second century, there was turmoil in the Muslim state. Yet, Medina remained a place of academic activity, the people coming to pray in the Prophet's mosque and to make their salutations to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. The Caliph al-Mahdi ordered the expansion of the mosque and renovation of the existing structure. The third century after the Hijra witnessed a general deterioration in all aspects of the quality of life. The number of buildings in the city decreased, 
and the palaces of al were abandoned. Security and peace became unsettled, and transgressions were made on the caravans. The city contracted, and for the first time in the year 200 and 63 after the Hijra, a wall was erected surrounding the city. It was renovated a number of times and expanded to embrace the outward spread of buildings to within its confines. The city remained fairly constant until the 10th century Hijra, continuing to expand and recede as conditions mandated. In the year 578 after the Hijra, the Crusades arrived at the outer reaches of Medina. One of the leaders of the Crusader armies, Arnat, dispatched a naval campaign to infiltrate the peninsula. His flotilla of ships sailed down the Red Sea and anchored off Yembor, where they landed their troops. The army marched towards Medina. In pursuit of them, Salahuddin al-Ayubi, Allah have mercy upon him. Salahuddin and his men overtook them at a distance of one night's march from Medina, where they killed most of the crusaders and took the remainder prisoner. Thus Medina was saved from their evil intentions by the grace of Allah. A huge volcano erupted to the east of Medina in the month of Rajab of the year 654 after the Hijra. A river of liquefied fire and molten rock surged toward Medina. Then, by the will of Allah, its direction was altered and oriented to the north. The volcano continued to spew its lava for nearly three months. Lightning struck the Prophet's mosque in the year 886 after the Hijra, destroying a large portion of the building and causing a huge fire to flare. The sacred chamber containing the grave of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his two companions, however, survived intact. The structure was restored at the expense of the Sultan, Qaitbai. A number of schools and charitable institutions were also founded, the scholars and students nurtured. The 10th century Hijra saw the beginning of the Ottoman period in Medina, which eventually spanned four centuries. Throughout that time, Medina witnessed many events. The city wall was restored, and a huge, impregnable fortress was erected. Military troops were stationed in the fortress to maintain security, Medina itself reaping the benefits of the ensuing stability. The caravans also realized the benefits of the period, as the number of infringements upon them was drastically reduced. Eventually, the administration and its authority declined. Conflict and dispute arose between the leader of the military unit and the civilian authorities. The upheaval and resulting disorder brought with it a return to breaches of security on the caravans, that of which eventually reached the boundaries of the city. Disturbances occurred within the confines of the city walls, which were then mitigated. In the year 1220 after the Hijra, the Medinans heeded the call of a reform movement and acceded to the first Saudi state, under which they enjoyed six years of security and calm. Osun Basha, the son of Muhammad Ali Basha, seized Medina, retaking it for the Ottoman state. In 1265, a construction project that continued over a period of 12 years was begun to expand the Prophet's mosque, the result a distinguished and beautiful building. Medina was connected with Istanbul in the year 1318 after the Hijra through a powerful wireless radio transmission station that was also capable of communicating with similar stations. Railway tracks directly linked Medina with Damascus in 1326 after the Hijra, bringing with them many social, cultural, economic, and developmental changes. The number of residents is increased from 10,000 to 30,000 as commerce flourished and wealth increased. In 1334, after the Hijra, a difficult and austere phase began that affected the lives of all Medinans. It was the outbreak of World War I. The Ottoman military leader, Fakhri Basha, amassed a huge military force on the outskirts of the city and built fortifications around it. They resisted the attempts of the army of the Sharif, Hussein of Mecca, and his allies to occupy the city. The Medinans were exhorted to leave. After that, 
many of those who hadn't voluntarily left were emigrated forcibly. The districts of Medina became devoid of life as most of its residences emptied. Those few who did remain passed through a period of more than three years of blockade, hunger, and exorbitant prices. The period of Ottoman administration of the province saw its demise in 1337 when their military made its exodus and Medina was handed over to the authority of the Hashemites. Medina realized the period of rejuvenated activity. It had become the equivalent of a small town. The number of residences did not increase, and the population did not exceed 15,000. Disorder and turmoil reappeared, and economic conditions deteriorated, as the Hashemite administration weakened. This was in particular due to conflicts and encounters with the military of the Saudi state that were encroaching upon Medina from a very close distance. The only way to realize relief was to opt for the unification that King Abdulaziz bin Abdurrahman al-Saud was advocating in his correspondence with them. He had by that time united the north of the Arabian Peninsula into a strong and powerful state under his standard. On the 19th of Jumad al awl in the year 1344, a delegation representing the Medinan people declared their pledge of fealty to King Abdulaziz. The very next day, Prince Muhammad, the son of Abdulaziz, entered the city of Medina and received it as the representative of his father, along with the pledge of fealty of its people. This event marked the start of a brilliant new phase of modern history for the city of El Medina Tul Munawara. King Abdulaziz visited Medina on the 23rd of the month of Rabia Thani in the year 1345 after the Hijra. He received the Medinans and the delegates of the bordering tribes. Twenty-five years later, in 1370, King Abdulaziz ordered the first Saudi expansion of the Prophet's Mosque. Land adjacent to the mosque was purchased to accommodate the new building. The northern colonnades of the existing structure were raised. Then, the remainder of the building was renovated and restored. Its size increased by more than 6,000 square meters. The beautiful new building contained magnificent and expansive colonnades, which could accommodate thousands more worshippers. Wide, spacious buildings were built, and their spread increased the size of the city. Nearby farms and groves disappeared as new residential districts appeared. All aspects of life were affected, including culture, economics, and development. The number of schools of all educational levels increased, and in 1381, the Islamic University was founded. It welcomed large numbers of the sons of the Islamic world who came to study Islamic academic disciplines and the refinements of the Arabic language. Branches of colleges subsidiary to King Abdulaziz University and Imam Muhammad ibn Saud Islamic University were also opened. The cultural magazine El Menhal began publication in Medina, followed shortly by the newspaper El Medina Tulmunawara. A trend of stimulated cultural awareness took root and spread. The first decade of the current 15th century hijra was witness to a huge cultural movement in all fields. The custodian of the two holy mosques, King Fahad bin Abdulaziz, ordered the establishment of a special ministerial committee to develop El Medina Tulmunawara. Developmental growth was initiated and grew in bounds as a result. Of the most important of the mammoth projects that were implemented are the second Saudi expansion of the Prophet's Mosque and the adjacent project to develop the central district of the city. On the 15th day of the month of Safar in the year 1405 after the Hijra, the custodian of the two holy mosques laid the cornerstone to start the huge, epic construction and development project, which would eventually span a period of nine years to completion. Whole districts around the mosque were appropriated through a remuneration program that liberally compensated the real estate owners for their holdings. The buildings therein disappeared in the ensuing demolition operation. Deep foundations were excavated, then huge cranes were erected and the construction commenced. It proceeded gradually with minute precision step by intricate step. His Royal Highness Prince Abdul Majid, the governor of the Medina Tulmunawara, personally supervised each step of the project, which proceeded with speed and precision. 
The custodian of the two holy mosques, King Fahad bin Abdelaziz, dedicated the building in 1414. The new expansion added 37,000 square meters to the existing structure. The roof surface also adds to the space that can be used for prayers, as it was designed specifically to accommodate worshippers. A parking facility was constructed under the vast plazas that surround the Prophet's Mosque, its capacity 5,000 vehicles. A wide 7-kilometer-long service tunnel contains the conduits that carry the chilled air from the distant air conditioning plant to the mosque. The Prophet's Mosque has become a unique pearl of construction in which visitors may worship in comfort and peace. Accompanying the last expansion project of the Prophet's Mosque is the huge plan to develop the central district. This mammoth project itself covers an area of one and one-half million square meters, with actual construction on half of it. The other half being devoted to al Baqiya Cemetery, utilities and services, as well as other particular integrated specifications. In no time, groups of massive commercial and residential buildings began to rise, comprised of hundreds of rooms, flats, and commercial space, all to accommodate the visitors to Medina, now thousands more than ever, on a modern, first-class level. The central district was designed as a city within a city, utilizing the most modern architectural and construction techniques, as well as the most up-to-date technological equipment. Thus, people staying in the area that surrounds the Prophet's Mosque are able to enjoy their sojourn in comfort and avail themselves of the complete services that are provided for them. Another project to restore and expand some of the historic mosques of Medina was established at the same time. Foremost among the mosques involved are the Kuba Mosque, the first mosque built in Islam, which was a very old building. The old structure was cleared away and a new expansive building was erected in its exact place its design preserving the integrity of the former. With all of its accompaniments, its area is 13,500 square meters. The surrounding district was also redesigned with the mosque, now a landmark of distinguished architectural design as its focal point. <laughs> At the portals of Medina, in the area called Dhul Khulaifa, there was a small old historic mosque, which was the Miqath Mosque. It is the place from which those traveling to perform Hajj or Umrah don their ihram. The custodian of the two holy mosques ordered the expansion and renovation of it. Thus, the structure was restored and the mosque established as a complete traveler's way station, containing all of the provisions for Ahram. Its total area now engulfs 90,000 square meters and will accommodate 5,000 worshippers. Ascribable to the municipality of Medina Tumunawara is an organized and systemized plan for the distribution and spread of the structures of the city within three consecutive rings. Beautiful gardens have been provided throughout all of the city's districts in order to maintain its appearance as an oasis of green. The precious faith that emerged across the ages has been renewed for residents and visitors alike. The sweetness and purity of it making the city peaceful and secure, a haven of self-repose for all. The supplication of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, O Lord, bless us in our city, resonates, reverberating till this very day, of the new places that have been developed and become landmarks in their own right, which carry the distinguished imprint of the historic eminence of El Medina Tul Munawara as the custodian of faith, is the Quran printing complex. Specializing in service to the noble Quran, the complex is the largest and most complete academic and scientific complex in the world. The Quran printing complex has brought together scholars, researchers, and reciters under one roof. Their task, the accurate printing and recitation of the Quran. The press apparatus itself is one of the most advanced available. Printing the Quran, 
as well as its explanation in the different languages of the Islamic world. The audio department prepares cassettes and compact discs of the various recitations of famous reciters. The press itself has produced more than 130 million Qurans and its explanation in various forms and sizes. And the audio department millions of recordings which have been distributed all over the world to carry the message of Islam. It was that message that raised Medina in the time of the Prophet and made it great. We remember the importance of what Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and Uthman bin Affan, Allah be pleased with them both, did in the service of the Book of Allah. It was gathered into one book, its text united, and it was distributed to all of the Islamic communities at that time. All of this is characteristic of the imprint of Medina on culture and history. This nobility carries through and is manifest by its service to the Book of Allah, the Almighty. Medina remains most beloved and cherished in the hearts of all Muslims, and from the supplication of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, make Medina beloved to us, just as we loved Mecca.